It's been a long time since I've done a video like this. This is going to go over proxying your browser and proxying Skype. This also is kind of weird because I'm doing this live. There's going to be no editing afterwards. I'm just recording and talking to you guys, and I'm just uploading it straight to YouTube without any editing. So hopefully I don't fuck this up. This is where we're at. So yesterday alone, I saw about 12 people go offline. Nine of them were on Palamos's stream, and then another like three people went offline just during my RBGs yesterday. DDoSing is still an issue. It's still happening a lot. I still get a lot of comments and a lot of views on my previous videos on how to protect Skype, but a lot of that's really outdated, and I don't open up virtual machines and install Skype on virtual machines that, proc that uh, have VPNs set up on them. Like, it's just it's too much work, too much work. So I'm going to go over exactly what I do, uh, the programs that I use. I ho hopefully it helps some of you guys out because there's a, there's a big RBG tournament coming up, and a lot of those people that are in the tournament played last night, and quite a few of those people went offline. I'm also going to go over how I change my IP address. Um, you guys are going to see my public IP address in, in this video. I'm going to change it afterwards, so I really don't give a shit. So, all right, here we go. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that if you don't want to use my method, proxy.net is a good alternative. For m most people, this is going to work just fine. It'll protect your Skype. Uh, it's five bucks a month. It's really easy to use, and you can set it up in just a few minutes. And, and it, for majority of people, this is good. Um, that's all you need. So if you want, sign up for proxy.net. I'm not really making any money off of that. I just want people to stay protected. As far as what I personally use, so for one, you need a proxy. You can use any number of, there's tons of websites out there that are going to give you a proxy. Mine that I use, uh, or one of the ones I use, because I've, I've used multiple, but the one I'm going to show you in this video is Proxy Ninjas, or it's like Ninjas Proxy, I don't know why they reversed the title of this, and but there's the website right there, uh, they have cheap proxies that you can buy, the customer service is pretty good, they're usually really quick about getting back to you if you need anything, they come highly recommended from me, they, they seem to have a, a really good uptime too. And then if you buy a proxy like this, then I recommend rec recommend I recommend a program like ProxyCat or Proxifier or one of those. But I'm going to show you ProxyCat. This software is about thirty dollars, I believe, it's about thirty bucks. Um, it's really good. So what this program will do is force any application on your computer to go out through the proxy. It forces all traffic, all traffic from that application goes out to the proxy. It's really simple to set up and I'm going to show you guys how. This is the program down here. You can right click, you can go under status and logs. It's going to show you what's being filtered and going out through the proxy right now. Right now I've been messing around with Chrome. Um, you can right click and you go under configuration and it's pretty much you have proxies. You just put your proxies in there. I have multiple proxies. I'm going to change my proxy to after this video. You click on the little new button. You type in whatever you want to call your proxy, whatever type it's going to be host name, port, uh, for the proxy, so you can see that information right here through the Ninja Proxies website, through your uh, admin control panel once you sign up. Here's going to be your, your proxy. You have your IP address right here, and then you have your port right there. So you go ahead and put in your, your IP address, you put in your port, and that's it. You can see this is how mine's configured right here and that's pretty much it so you got the proxy in there um, if you want you can ignore chains you can chain, pro uh, chain proxies together rules is where uh, the important part comes in here so so pretty much the, the idea is all you need to do is point it to the executable that's going out to the internet and it'll force all traffic to go out through your proxy what I typically do is I put in a catch-all so I'll show you how to set that up. You click on a little new button here to set up a new thing. Redirect through proxy. You have a couple options here. You want it to redirect through your proxy. Uh, choose the proxy that you already put in there. You can click all programs. Um, you can just call this whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to match the keyboard. And all of this you can leave alone. And here you've got a new rule. And I can uncheck all of these other rules because this is the only rule that I need right now. It's going to make all your traffic go out through the proxy. So you can see, if I open up Microsoft Edge, say I want Microsoft Edge to be um, proxied. 
I've got to click OK on this window, sorry. You have to click OK to apply the setting, of course. And then close and reset the browser. And there you go. You can see my IP address changed from what it was to what it is now. All traffic is now being, from my computer, is being filtered out through the proxy. So you can see your public IP address has now changed. It's hidden. You can see over here in the status and logs, you can see the applications that are going out through that proxy right now. So right now, I've got two, Microsoft Edge CP.exe and Microsoft Edge.exe. So both of these would need to be proxied in order for it to work. Well, look, I've already got a rule set up for that one, but I'll show you guys how to set it up again. Um, you want to know where this application is, Microsoft Edge. So you can go under your task manager, go under open file location, you've got the file location. So now you know where where the Microsoft uh, where the application is. So you copy the location and we're going to set up a new rule to proxy your browser. So click on new. You want it to redirect through your proxy. Choose your proxy. You want to specify the location. I've already had it in here but if you didn't you would you would go here I'm going to click the first application. All this looks good. We're just going to call this mEdge. And you want to set the other application in there too. So you want to go into properties for this, go into programs, and add the other one CP as well. So now you've got both of them in there. Now you can test this out by unchecking the all so that everything is not filtered. And actually you can uncheck both. Click OK on that rule, and you can see your, your IP ad changed. Now this is my real IP address that's, that's public. Now I can go back under the configuration. I can check just our new rule, click OK, and then I may need to close the browser. Let's close the browser and reopen it. And you can see my IP changed. So now this browser is protected. Now the reason you want to do this is because forum posts, um, arena junkies uh, the, like I'm um, just uh, <laughs> there's a ton of websites any of your friends forums that, that they any links that your friends give you they could all potentially take your IP address it's really important to not just proxy your Skype but also proxy your browser as well you really don't want to give them any way to try to get your IP address so now that that's done I'll go ahead and show you with Skype oh, the other thing so in here You've got your proxy IP address, and at the very bottom you have allowed IP addresses. So I've got, there's my public IP address right there. So anytime, like if you have a friend you want to add, you can just go ahead and just type in that and just add them to the list, and that way they can access your proxies as well. Um, so for Skype, Skype's going to be the same way. So um, say if I delete myself from here. I don't have access to my own proxy anymore. My IP address is gone from the list. You go under configuration, and Skype's, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. You just point it to your Skype application. So, new rule, uh, redirect through proxy, choose your proxy, specify the application. I forget where my Skype application is, but say if it's C program data. Uh, where the fuck is it? I don't even know. Fuck. Program files 86, Skype, phone, Skype. Okay. So, new. You can just search your, your computer. If you can't figure out where the executable is for Skype, then, then you need a easier video than this one. But, specify, uh, C, program files... Skype, phone, Skype. All right, so there's the executable. Uh, we're just going to call this one Skype done. Okay, now keep in mind, I did not, I just deleted myself. I do not have access into my uh, proxy anymore. So I'm going to click OK on this rule. When I open up Skype, it should not connect. I do not have access to my proxy. It's just going to spin. And you'll see right here, 
That's all it's going to do. It's just going to sit there and spin and spin and spin and spin. And you're not going to, it's not going to let you online. So if anyone takes down your proxy, it's not going to auto redirect through your home internet. It's going to keep trying the proxy. It's only, it's going to force all traffic to go out through that proxy. So it's just going to sit there and spin and spin and spin and spin. So you quit Skype. Here I can add my IP address. So now my IP address is now, now has access to my proxy again. And you can see if I try to open up Skype again. It connects right away and I'm on, everything's good. And you can see through the status, like Skype is, has a lot of connections going out right now, out and in. So that's it. That's how you proxy your Skype. That's how you proxy your browser. Um, and you can proxy anything. Um, TeamSpeak, you have to be careful of what TeamSpeak servers you join because um, whoever owns the TeamSpeak server has the ability to see uh, the IP addresses of, of the people that are connected. You can just right click on anyone's username and say, view their uh, properties of their username and see their IP address. Um, so you have to be wary of TeamSpeak and um, there's probably a ton of other things you have to be careful of. So um, keep yourself safe, proxy your shit, and you won't get DDoSed. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, oh, sorry, fuck, my phone's going off, sorry. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, changing your IP address. So here we have my personal router. Um, if you have a separated modem and router, and your modem can't be one of those modems with like an EMTA uh, phone, so use it for telephone service as well, because you need to take out the battery for those things. And, and it can't be a modem and router combined. Like, just get, a, just get a simple modem, get a regular modem, and get a standalone router, and you can change your IP address in minute, like a minute, anytime you want. Um, all you do is you log into your router, and you should have an internet or WAN tab. You click on that. Here you can see your MAC address of your router. So the way this works is the IP address that you're assigned through your internet service provider is dependent on the MAC address of the first device that's plugged into your modem. So say if you had two computers at home and your computer was directly connected to your modem, you're going to have a, a certain IP address. If you were to disconnect that computer and hook up a second computer and reset your modem at home, you're going to get a different IP address. Well, for most people, the first device that's plugged into their modem is their router. Um, if you were to take your, go out to Best Buy and buy a new router and come home and hook it up and reset your cable modem, you're going to get a new IP address. So the, what this does, this, this MAC address setting does, is it tricks your modem into thinking that a new device has been plugged into it. So all you have to do is, I don't know why it disappears when I click on that, but you can see it's hex. Uh, so I think that's like A through E and uh, 0 through 9 or something like that. So, or A through F. A through F, A through F, 0 through 9. Uh, it's been a while, but you just want to change the last character. So my my last character is zero two. So you know what? Like I'm just going to change that to zero three, and that's it. And then you hit the Mac clone button, and it's give it a second. Your router will probably reset. And what you want to do is just go over and unplug your cable modem. Make sure all the lights are dead. Leave it unplugged for thirty to sixty seconds. Plug it back in. And when you go back into like Google and Google My IP and you refresh the browser, you're going to get a new IP address. Uh, if you don't, it means your modem really didn't turn off. It's got a battery backup in it or or some other shit's going on. But that's how you change your IP, and you can just do it in a minute anytime you want. Um, so proxy your shit, change your IP address, and you should be good. So that's it for this video. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll try to answer, but I feel like I, I hit everything pretty well. Uh, talk to you guys later. Take care.